Thank you to the GMB for inviting me to speak today and to Barbara for the introduction that she made beforehand. It is a mark of how strange and frustrating the last year has been that this is my first chance to speak to GMB Congress as Labour leader and I'm having to do so from behind a Zoom screen. Just me and a laptop and all the problems that that brings. The last time I was at your Congress was two years ago and it was a glorious sunny day in Brighton with lots of people around. And I had the chance to meet a GMB delegation, including Gary Smith, reps and delegates, to discuss the changes that were coming to manufacturing, to workers' rights, to post-Brexit trade, and of course, to the Scotch whisky industry. Well, a lot has happened since then. But as our brilliant NHS continued to make the impossible possible through the vaccine rollout, I hope, sincerely hope, that this will be the last time that there's a screen between us. And I look forward to being back together very soon. I want to congratulate everybody at GMB for putting on this conference in the most difficult of circumstances. And on behalf of the whole Labour Party, I want to thank you for your incredible support over the last year. I value it immensely. And I want to start by congratulating Gary on his election as General Secretary. Last summer, Gary and I had a pint in Edinburgh during one of those rare occasions when it was allowed. We spoke about how we could rebuild working class support in Scotland. And I asked him to help us on our constitutional commission. And it was clear then from that discussion that Gary had such a passion for the trade union he now leads and for the labour movement and for his country. Gary, I'm really looking forward to working with you on the next stage of this journey. I also want to pay tribute to Rihanna and to Giovanna for the way they fought this election. And of course to Warren Kenny for stepping up and steadying the ship as acting General Secretary. Thank you, Warren, for everything you've done and for providing stability at such an important time. These last few months have seen major successes for GMB and for our members. I say our members because I joined GMB when I was a lawyer many years ago and I'm still a proud member. So let me reflect on some of these recent successes. The recognition agreement with Uber is truly groundbreaking for the union movement and for working people. It means GMB will be able to help 70,000 Uber drivers to organise and to negotiate terms and conditions for the first time. It builds on the huge progress you've made earlier this year on pay, on pensions and on holiday entitlement. And it shows how trade unions can raise standards and protect workers, even in the gig economy. I'm so proud of GMB for fighting this case and for making a real difference, not just for Uber workers, but for all those who will follow. I want to congratulate Mick Ricks and all the GMB reps for all your work on this campaign, not just in the last few months, but over many years. I know it's been a real David versus Goliath struggle. It takes me back to the many years I spent as a young lawyer working with Helen Steele and Dave Morris on the McLibel case, taking on the mighty McDonald's, fighting and winning against all odds in court. But that's why, and I may be the only former lawyer to say this, I want to lead a government that makes sure that working people and trade unions don't have to go to court and don't have to spend huge amount of time and money just to get a fair deal. The government I lead will be one that changes lives, tackles injustice and is always on the side of working people. I also want to pay tribute to the way GMB have fought tirelessly 
against fire and rehire. When I spoke at the TUC Congress last September, yes, once again, that was from behind a Zoom screen, only on that occasion, if I remember, I was self-isolating, so ended up doing my speech from my loft. But as I said then, and I say it again today, we have to outlaw fire and rehire. These tactics are wrong. They punish good employers, they hit working people, and they harm our economy. When I spoke back then at the TUC conference, you'd seen this firsthand with workers at Centrica and Asda, starting even before the pandemic. But it's now much more widespread. The British Airways, Weetabix, Tesco, and across a range of sectors, including those previously thought to provide more secure employment. The TUC estimate that one in 10 workers have been threatened with fire and rehire during the pandemic. One in 10. That's a truly shocking way to repay the sacrifices of so many working people. This levelling down of our economy and workers' rights can't continue. After everything the British people have been through in the last year, we can't go back to business as usual, back to where we started and try to patch it up. And we can't continue the slide towards a low rights, low pay economy. As we recover from this pandemic, we have to build a more secure economy to rebuild the foundations after a decade of neglect and to get Britain ready for the challenges and opportunities of the future. That's the central task of the Labour Party I lead. Not to tinker around the edges, but to transform the country and to transform our economy so it works for working people. So that everybody can earn a wage that they can bring up a family on. So that we can support British manufacturing and bring good quality jobs back to Britain. So we can lead the world in energy with the infrastructure and jobs of the future created here not just overseas. And as our new Shadow Chancellor, Rachel Reeves, has set out, so we can deliver the biggest wave of insourcing in a generation and bring public services back in public hands for the benefit of all of us. But as Gary said in an article at the weekend, these aren't times of harvest we face the threat of a new wave of austerity and a Conservative government that has no interest in delivering real change for working people. They've dropped the employment bill they promised two years ago. They won't outlaw fire and rehire, as Labour would. They want to toughen anti-trade union laws rather than to repeal them, as Labour would. And in the last week, we've seen what levelling up really means for kids' education. One-tenth of the funding that's needed. The most disadvantaged children falling further behind. And our teachers, including school support staff, were once again being asked to do more, but with less. It shows you everything you need to know about this government's priorities. In the coming weeks and months, I'll be setting out the next stage of Labour's plan as we build towards the next general election. I'll be out across the country talking directly to the British people. And I can assure you that work and building a more secure economy will be central to that. Labour is, was and will always be the party of work and the party of working people. I want people to know once again that under a Labour government they'll earn a decent day's pay from a job that they're proud of. That we'll end the race to the bottom on rights and standards. And that we'll rebalance our economy so it works for all parts of the country. And so it's focused on the long term, not short term shareholder gain. In the last year we've taken 
a number of really important steps on that journey. And in particular, I want to thank Andy McDonnell for the way he's led the task force on power in the workplace. And I'll be working closely with Andy and with Angela Rayner as we continue to drive that agenda forward. But if we're to achieve everything we want for this country and for this movement, we're going to need your help. This party was born out of the trade union movement. And it's only when we work together, as we have done in the last year, that we can stand up for working people, stand up against this Conservative government, and set out the transformative change Britain so desperately needs. That's the task ahead of us. And I'm looking forward to achieving it with you. Thank you.